Peters is sitting on bullshitting log. <laughs> Yeah, sitting down on log. <laughs> well, those guys that used to have good backs. <laughs> You know, it's just something we gotta really keep for our grandchildren, our great grandchildren. I mean, it's sad that people just don't really get to to see this. This should be everywhere. You know, we we just really, you know, love where we are and, and the lifestyle we have. I mean, I've raised my family doing this. This is my son's operation. I mean, he's in love with it. My grandkids, uh, when you talk about being a rich person. My family's healthy, they love the outdoors, they're not on drugs, they're not on crack, they're honest. You know, you can't get richer than that. And it's sad that more people can't connect with the land and, and really understand the role that Hunter plays, that, that this will fall apart. This man is either here as a predator and a hunter and a carer for the wildlife, or is here as a developer in which the wildlife is an obstacle in his way right. and the habitat needs to be changed to make a money and you know we you know we we should be the best friends of all these environmentalists because we're on the land and we care yeah. well you you can't you can't get better than what we got i mean we meet people doing something they love to do i mean we could meet people that maybe in other circumstances you couldn't stand to be around them but they're here and they're the nicest people in the world. I mean, they're, they're living their dream and, and they're appreciating the outdoors. They're, they're back to being what people were, part of the ecosystem. And it's great. I mean, my family loves it. I, I can't complain. I mean, I put three kids through school, fed my family doing this, and I go to places I started going to 40 years ago and they're not changed. I mean, they've stayed the same, but how long is that going to be? I mean, you know, the the movements we have, things like uh, you go to almost every jurisdiction, people will speak against the non-residents are coming in and shooting up our game. Uh, we're in Alabama, we're in Texas, why are we letting all these other guys out of the state shoot our best animals? Well, we're all part of a team and that makes your place worth dying for. That's a hill that's worth dying on as long as as everybody's there. And the Andes would separate us and divide us, pick differences, bow hunters against rifle hunters, non-residents against residents, divide and conquer. Yeah. And once you're divided, you're a country without allies. When right. you're attacked by them, they try to close your season, drive you out. Nobody's gonna support you because it's not a hill worth dying on for them anymore. Mm -hmm. And we got to stick together and ensure that our grandchildren get to do this. Your grandkids got to come up here. I yeah. mean, that'd be the neatest thing, I think, to see somebody that hunted with me 20 years ago come in and bring his grandkid. I've only had it happen once so far, and it's neat. I got to tell you, it's one of the great experiences. Yeah, look at that lake leveling out now. We talked earlier about sounds when that loon we were kind of hoping to whale up here again that loon on that lake and i had a older outfitter when i was starting out tell me something because i was really dead set on trying to eliminate every wolf so i'd have more to hunt and he sat me down and brought me back to reality he said there's three sounds in this world we never want to have disappear he said the wail of a loon on a northern lake on a misty morning that haunting call coming across, or a bull elk on a frosty morning in the fall when he bugles. 
and you can see his breath. Or when you're laying in a tent in the wilderness and the moon comes up and you hear the leader of that wolf pack call up the pack for the hunt. If you are laying in a tent, you hear them call up the pack. If you can't feel your blood stir, if you can't feel primeval instincts rising in you, that little bit of excitement, a little bit of fear, a little bit of, of envy, you're not human. Right. You know, and those are sounds we don't want to eliminate. But you understand that we're the predator, as I said, that knows that we can't survive without prey. All the other predators don't understand that. And the thing nowadays is we have to strive for balance. It's not abundance. Having a thousand deer on your farm isn't going to ensure their survival. You know, it's it's having a balance in there that that protects the range protects the predators and allows for them to continue their cycle of life for perpetuity. And, and that's where we gotta go. You know, we, we understand that. I don't believe any hunters understand the cycle of life. I think we really truly instill fear in them. The fact that we would kill an animal reminds them that they're gonna die. And we as hunters know that, no, we're just part of a cycle of life and Although our body might die, we're gonna live on as long as that cycle continues. So if we don't destroy that cycle, we'll be here forever. And those animals will be here forever. We've been waiting since we last fall for that first chance to leave the ranch, get it all, and head to that high country, barren fly country, into the mountains where that sweet water falls. Spring is coming, boys, you better round up them ponies, fix that gear so it'll last another year. When all those shoes are on, all our blues are gone, cause soon we'll be heading out of here. Crazy cayuses, hot colds kicking up their heels. Spring is in the air and we know just how they feel. No more hay to pack from that empty old hay shack. Just lots of green, green grass where we are going. Spring is coming, boys, you better round up them ponies. Fix that gear so it'll last another year. And when all those shoes are on, all our blues are gone, cause soon we'll be heading out of here. Bon voyage! Hey. Where's the champagne? <laughs> We're afraid the glass might cut the boat. <laughs> Bet it would. <laughs> We'd do it, but they don't drink the champagne, they break it. Yeah. <laughs> J stroke, J stroke. <laughs> Everyone's busy breaking horses, fixing fences, packing boxes, mending cinches. There's so much to do. And Barry is chewing with much cursing in Sue. Don't work so hard for nothing, so I know it must be true that spring is coming, boys. You better round up them ponies, fix that gear so it'll last another year. And when all those shoes are on, all our blues are gone, cause soon we'll be heading out of here. You like the way the same? Say we're pretty close. Always get a second opinion. Oh, 
Okay, you take it easy. Remember, you get in trouble, get off and tie up your horse. Spring is coming, boys, you better round up them ponies. It's that year, so it'll last another year. And when all those shoes are on, all our blues are gone, cause soon we'll be heading out of here. I said soon we'll be heading out of here. Later, Pete. Take care. Me too. Yeah. We'll come back the day after tomorrow with a ram. Sounds good. All right. <laughs>